Hey there, everybody. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. I did that wrong. Wait, we got to switch to this camera. I got the wrong camera. Hey there, everybody. Welcome to the live show. We're live. And it's Thursday, right? Thursday. And so it's time for me to start painting the fairy. The fairy. I mean, that's the best word for it at the moment because it's as big as the nose of a dragon so it's not exactly fairy size but hey this is a fantasy picture it's fun thanks to Salma I ended up doing a fairy instead of just a girl in blue jeans on a cliffside <laughs> I love the ideas hey this is really this is really uh more more about having fun with the ideas than it is about me making a masterpiece I really enjoy it all right we've got uh tuning in on the live chat We've got tip of the morning to you, says Wings and Things. Hey, good morning. Thanks for being here. And we've got a lot of a lot of people from last, last, uh, I was going to say last week, but so many of you have been so faithfully coming back watching my show. I'm very flattered. I'm really honored that you keep coming back and watching. It's the best. Hi, Adora. Hi, Jesse. Jesse. 11 p.m. here, says Jesse. It's late. All right. Well, thanks for staying up late. That, at least that's late for me. Thanks for staying up late on my account. Azu says, hi, sir. Hello. Hello. Thanks for being here. Hi, Joe. Hope you're staying safe. Oh, man. I'm so tired of the word safe. It's driving me crazy. Safe is not what I love in life, but I understand the importance. I'm not, I'm not disrespecting what you say. Thank you for the good wishes. It's important to my family that I stay safe too. You know, it's important, but man, I'm so tired of hearing about safe, 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 safety, safety. It takes all the meaning out of life for me. Hello from St. Tropa's France. All right, from France. Cool. Thanks for being here. I'm doing good, Melanie. Thank you for asking. South Africa. Alice Brown from South Africa. All right. Thanks for tuning in. Excited for another stream, says Shannon. Cool. All right. Me too. I'm excited too. Watched all of them? Some a few times? Whoa. All right. Thank you. De, uh, De Brajo? Val? Says, me too. So tired of hearing stay safe. Yeah. I know. I guess the whole conversation is starting to get, you know, redundant. But uh, I'm trying to stay objective and be respectful of all of the different sides. This is a very touchy subject, you know. It hits a lot of nerves when a when, uh, whole world has changed the way they do things. Hi, Bernice. I hope you're doing better with that uh, iPhone 11, iPad 11, <laughs> whatever it was. Thanks for being here. Hi from England. All right, cool. Can't wait to see the end results. All right, thanks. Okay, I'm going to get started. I know a lot of you are just waiting for me to just actually do some painting instead of all this jibber jabber, but uh, I just want to take a moment to say good morning from my end. It's morning here, 9 a.m. And uh, just, just tell you, I appreciate you being here. We've got 13 viewers, a very small number compared to compared to our previous videos, but this is nice. It's like one of my workshops. That's that's about the number we do when I have the local workshops here. People travel and we learn to paint for maybe like three, three or four days. And some of the best quality time I ever have is when you get a, a number like that where we can talk back and forth. Greetings from Vancouver. All right, cool, thank you. Hi from India. 55 viewers. Ah, my screen needs to update. <laughs> I said 13 viewers. It still says 13. Oh man. I'm gonna refresh the page, see if that changes it. And since I'm since I'm set up with a, a better method of recording, thanks to my best buddy Todd, who let me use all this nice equipment, I can refresh the screen without crashing the system. So I'm just gonna hit that refresh button real quick while I go over here and start working on this.
Oh yeah, 57 viewers, it says right there. So I'm switching the view over to my close-up camera and what I need to do is make sure that you can see nice and close on this one. So I put this, this is a piece of siding from, uh, <laughs> from my house, from outside. So I'm doing a little bit of repair work on the siding outside, but this board here is for me to mix paint on. And all I did was attach it here with a clip. You can see up there that I've got a clip at the top. And I'm gonna use that right beside because I don't want to be, um, I don't want to be putting a whole bunch of colors. You know, I normally mix right on the canvas, but as it as it gets further and further into a project, I run out of places to just put scrap paint and mix my colors. So I'm going to use this as a palette, and I'm kind of thinking that maybe it'd be better to scoot it over to this side, except that then we can't see the dragon. It's kind of nice to see the dragon here. Let's go like this. I want to see my whole scene. No, let's keep it where it was. Let's go like this. Yes, very good. That that visual is very important to me. I like to see what I'm making while I'm making it. There's all I'm I'm doing some some drawing videos. I keep saying that and nothing is appearing. I I keep messing them up is why. But I'm working on some drawing videos. And my approach to painting and drawing, the reason I bring that up is because my approach is get it looking like something as fast as possible because you need the inspiration. You need the energy that it gives you to see your drawing turning into something. I've noticed that uh, many, many people, including myself, can break down a picture into lots of little squares, lots of very geometric guides that that really let you see exactly where you need to put each little detail and color. But if it's not fun, then you run out of energy. And when you run out of energy, your picture starts to suffer for it. So I find that it's a good method to, uh, oh, I cut to the wrong cut to the wrong camera there. I find that it's a good method to, um, was, I, was I just looking at the wrong camera? I'm trying to get used to which camera to looking at. I got two of them here. I've got my camera on the painting. I've got my camera on here. I think I failed to switch. So if you end up looking at my ear for 30 minutes, <laughs> man, I'm sorry. Anyway, uh, the method is very important to me to getting shapes as quick as possible. So when I make my guide, you know, when you saw me working on, on the little fairy here, I go right for the curves of the thigh, the legs. I need to see that shape right at the beginning, even if I'm going to adjust it later. And so coming up with something in between a good, a good guide of proportions and lines, you know, just, just my thoughts on, on the method of trying to, to learn and draw and paint more accurately. All right, let's cut to the other camera. I get going on this little fairy. I'm going to be using my, I'm going to uh, use my acrylics. And so the paint that I've been using all along is acrylic, but it's more watered down. It's made for walls, and it's it's uh, not quite as vivid on color. So the bright blue that I can get here, you can see it just barely in the corner, not quite it's very close but maybe not quite as bright as what i can get out of these tubes so a phthalo blue will be just about that exact color blue when i mix it with white and i've got that just out of a can i just asked the paint store i say will you put four ounces of blue pigment just blue in a deep base satin sheen that's how i get that paint they do it for me. It's called a manual formula. When you don't pick something off of the chart, you just say, well, you put this pigment in this base. A lot of paint stores don't like to do that, so you kind of have to <laughs> try to argue a little bit a lot of the time, unfortunately. So now I'm going to put some of these colors on here, and I need a good skin tone. So let's do, let's do, um, I think orange. I think orange instead of yellow. Let's do that. So do I have orange? I'm not sure. Oh, I do. Good. I've got some orange. I can I can make orange with red and yellow, but 
this orange I consider a primary color because I cannot make an orange that is this bright. And that's what it all comes down to with primary colors. We can make the whole rainbow with shades of gray, but we call things primary colors. I call them primary colors when I can't get that same result with mixing. So this orange is brighter than what I'll be able to get with red and yellow, so it's a primary. But I'm not using it for its brightness at the moment. It's not for its brightness. I'm actually using this just for the hue because it's quicker than mixing red and yellow. And so I'll just have this orange for skin tone. I'll use, I'll use some, I think magenta because I don't have any brown in this paint. So I'll use my, my least red, red that's available because I've got to make skin tone get more toward violet in the shadows, more toward yellow in the highlights. So I'm going to, I'm going to move it. And you know, that pattern applies no matter what the color of the skin is. So if I'm painting, if I'm painting dark brown skin, I'll move the shadows toward violet. I'll move the bright areas toward yellow, toward, not to be confused with adding that exact color. It doesn't mean that it's either purple or yellow. It means I move it towards, so wherever it is. A brown is just a, you know, it's in just terms of color, a dark brown skin is, is the same colors as my skin, just with less, less white paint added. It's just the brown and maybe with some black added to get the darkness. But the, the place on the rainbow would be the same. So this is good to think about. I'm gonna do skin tone all through here. And, and I need to just plan, the better I plan how I can quickly blend these colors, the better, um, the easier my job is gonna be. So I'm trying to get as close as possible with my primaries. I'm gonna put black on here. So let's put a blob of black. Boy, this, this particular line of paint by Grumbacher is, is a, uh, very very thin it, it really goes quick and i'm not sure if that's good or bad you know definitely not sponsoring this video so i can say <laughs> i can say good or bad i think i like it it's more like the house paint in that respect that i can spread it out very quickly and then i've got white black white orange purple this this sets me up for all kinds of different skin colors i think i could paint any skin tone all of the different ethnicities that are out there, I could probably do any of it with, with these four colors. So I'm just gonna do some kind of a, I'm just gonna do some kind of a medium skin tone on this, like in, in between everything, something darker than mine, lighter, lighter than the darkest brown, you know, just something in between so that we've just got a, got a um, middle ground color. Besides that is my, happens to be my well I don't know if it's good to pick favorites on skin color but just as someone that loves color I really I really like I really like the uh, the skin tone that's just a, a little bit dark you know and the way the colors bounce when the light hits that I, I just you know I guess if we're being honest I do have favorite color okay I'm gonna get in trouble if I talk more about that hey what about my skin color someone's gonna say <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I've got favorites. Okay. No, make her lighter. A light. <laughs> We've all got favorites. <laughs> That's funny. But let's not confuse color with race. Color is color. I have favorite colors. Good morning, gee whiz. Paige Marie, don't forget fairy ears too. Hi from India. Hey, how's it going? Here, let's... Let's get back there. I just wanted to do a quick stop on the live chat and see, see if I was getting in trouble for talking about people's skin color. Okay, now let's do this. Let's put, let's put some highlights here. I'm thinking that we want the arm going across like this. And let's put orange. So 
I want to get more colorful as I go into the shadows probably. So I've got an arm going across here. I'm going to start putting this, this magenta color in there. Go across that arm and I think I'm, I think I'm heavier on the white. Mm. Okay. Let's go like this. I was always envious of people with dark skin, you know. Whatever your skin color is, man, I, I, I just love dark skin. It just is so beautiful to look at, this, the uh, smoothness of it. I was always jealous that I didn't have that. But I don't like tans. I don't want to get a tan. Okay. Let's go like this and put a little bit more of the color. So now it's just a little bit less white, a little bit more of the color. So look how I just immediately, I immediately just start adding my color as I go into the shadow to get that arm. Here, let's zoom in a little bit more so you can see what I'm doing. And so wherever I get darker, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna keep adding that purple in order to get the light and shadow and to get it to look like skin. This is why, this right here is why skin so often looks dead when you paint it. So when you get the zombie look, it's, it's because there isn't the right color in that transition between light and shadow. All the magic of vibrant, alive skin tone happens in here between the light in the shadow there's got to be color there if you don't have color on this line between light and shadow then it doesn't it doesn't matter if there's color in the other spots that's that's the part that has the greatest influence on it okay so we've got a shoulder coming across and i'm going to i'm going to have to adjust the shape i've got a pretty rough shape going on this so here let's go like this I want to show you how these four I want to show you how these four colors can make whatever skin color I want to see. So I've got I've got a skin color similar to mine now. So you can I mean we don't really have to do a whole lot of studying to see that that is whitish colored like mine and then I can I can put a, a little bit of extra color right here in this transition like this and put some right here under the elbow. There, get plenty of color in that transition. Okay, now I'm just gonna use less white and watch how the skin tone changes. So now I'm gonna put my orange for the highlight. I'm gonna put more of the purple. Now we're going to maybe something like Hispanic skin tone. We're gonna get a little bit darker and go like this. Put some of that purple, put a little more of the orange Okay, there's still some white mixing into it. We're going across here for the, for the shoulder. And then we're going to use a little bit of black under here for a shadow. And so as long as I get this, as long as I get this color relationship, now the skin tone is getting darker. Okay, let's do black. Let's do a black person. Let's go, let's go orange in the highlight. Let's do purple as we go down we got to get lots of color now we want lots of color okay and then I'm going to start putting darker shadow in here nice and dark under here I got to get lots of color because once I get that gray effect I don't want gray lots of color in here so I put that purple I'll put a little more orange Coming down, see that kind of green effect? This is exactly what I want to avoid. See how it's kind of turning green in the middle? A little bit, maybe, maybe not, maybe not too much, but we want to use this magenta wherever it starts getting that green effect. Like that. We can get darker and darker with this and turn it to whatever skin color we want to see. But the relationship, this is why 
I think this is so valuable because the relationship of colors is the same. This is a this is a helpful tool that you can use understanding how to just shift the hue as you go from highlight to shadow in order to get the darkness of the skin color. Okay, so now I'm going to start putting a face in place. Haha, <laughs> I did not mean to rhyme like that. Let's put magenta and orange. Let's just get a face going out like this and in. I want to see a little bit a little bit more neck, I think, on the character, so I'll put a little bit of shadow in here. Like this, shoulder coming across. Chin is right here. I'm going to start real rough and then get get more detailed. So there's a shadow. This is between jaw and neck right here. I'm just putting a shadow in. It goes up behind the jaw. The ear is going to be in here. And then there's going to be a shadow under the armpit right there. And so we might have some shadow on the head. Let's put some... <laughs> Who said... Fairy ears, don't forget your fairy ears. Okay, let's go like this. Let's put some fairy ears right there, adding some magenta and orange, and then we'll just take a little bit of white. Might take a few layers. Might take a few layers to actually cover up that black that this is going on top of. Okay, so let's point the little ears. Right, is that a fairy ear? And then we're going to put a, we're going to put, what should we do next? I'm going to put some lighter, some lighter skin right here. I'm going to lighten it up just a little bit. It'll be easier for me to see some detail on this. So let's go like this, a little bit lighter. Now I'm going to try to get more detailed with shoulder comes out just under the chin. Then we've got tricep would be visible right here. Under the tricep to the elbow, we've got a little muscle here on the arm. We've got muscles going across to the top of the hand right there. And so that is the basic shapes that I want to see represented on this arm. So now I'll grab a little bit more of my brighter orange highlight and kind of go across the top showing these shapes. So I'll just kind of go like this, show the top of each muscle and divide it a little bit. So I, this, this boundary area of this highlight helps me to get each of those shapes defined. I didn't want to make her without any muscle, you know, I just, I like seeing a little bit of muscle definition in there. So now let's put some, let's put a face real quick. I want to make the head a little bit bigger now. So let's put a shadow right here. We've got purple, orange. I'm mixing these colors here. Let's get this. You can't see the colors I'm mixing very well, huh? Let's bump over a little bit like this so you can see what I'm mixing. Purple and orange are going to get me a good shadow color for this. And I'm going to put a shadow right here on the edge right on the middle of the face. A brow, you know, if the face is looking this way, eyebrow would be near the top of an ear. Normal sized ear. <laughs> so a brow might be right here. And so I'll put a little shadow here for the eye socket. Let's put a little more dark, dark shadow in there. Just a little line like that. And if I take a bit of white, I wonder if I could get just the whites of the eyes like this. Right there, and then a little bit of black for some color on the front of the eye. Like that, there, now it's an eye looking that way. You know, this is the one part of a picture, pretty much the one part of a picture where details that small really make a difference is on a face because facial recogni recognition is so fine-tuned you know okay now I've got a little shadow above I need a shadow for the nose now so let's get more of our 
our dark mix with the magenta, the orange, the purple, and put a nose right here. And then I'll put an upper lip right under that a little further back. So I can make another little shadow right here for the upper lip. I'll make another little shadow under that for the shadow under the lower lip. And now I'm going to fill in the light colors in between. So let's put lighter color right in here. Right there, I put, put white on there. Man, my brush is a little bit hard to control on this tiny scale. I gotta get right up to this painting and go. I'm like leaning right on the picture. Put this lip going down right here. Put a little bit more red on this lip here. Let's use that magenta. Put a little bit more red on that lip that's facing upward. Let's put a chin right under there. So this is the shadow under the lower lip and let's put the chin very small face but you know if this was a photo it wouldn't seem small at all we would have no difficulty whatsoever distinguishing who that was if we if we knew if we knew the person and so it's just a matter of taking the details seriously you know it really counts exactly where you put each little shadow i'm going to put a diagonal shadow coming across here to define the ridge where the cheekbone is so let's do this put some white and orange we're going across here let's go like that and now i'm going to start fading Fading into this color for the neck. I got to see a little more neck on here, right under the jaw, like this. So I'm gradually going to tweak these shapes. You know, I just got to get something in place to look at in order to adjust. So I got a face, got my little nose coming down. And I'm thinking about thinking about this mouth area and how I would see it better if I was able to just kind of, you know, I don't know if I want to put a little shadow or a little highlight on it, but I'll see it better if I make it stand apart from this background. I think just, just for now, just strategy for seeing what I'm doing, I'm going to eliminate that background. So let me grab my, let me grab my blue and white and put this in here. I'm just gonna put the sky color going down so that I can see the outline of this face better. So I can make the face darker than the background, I can make the background darker than the face. I gotta, I gotta think about it, but this is a, you know, this is the thing you can, you can think through when you're doing a, a picture, it's okay to strategically lighten or darken something. Something you can't do in photos. Sometimes you take a picture of a scene you really love and because it's not in motion, because you're not, you know, you're not seeing it in real life with all of the same depth, you'll lose shapes a lot just because there are common colors on top of each other. You lose it. So it's nice in a painting to be able to manually change that. Now, in order to make it a feminine face, I want to talk a little bit about how you make a feminine face. The way I do that is by being really mindful of the distance to the chin. So, so the bigger I make the face in comparison to everything below the brow, all the face bones. I'm just going to flip over real quick to the live chat. I want to see, see if anybody's got anything to say. So I'm going to cut, cut camera, switch over, and... And so, uh, the way I do a feminine versus masculine face is everything below the brows. Boy faces, male faces continue to grow bigger face bones. I think I've talked about this before. 
I think I did when I was doing The Mermaid. No, I did. The ears just need a little tuning up. I think the whole thing needs a tune up at this point. So, so uh, I'm being really mindful as I paint of how big the face is compared to the outline of it, the chin, the cheekbones. If you make a small face on a big head, it's much easier to make that into a masculine uh, look. But if you make a larger face on a smaller head that has you know less of the corners of the bones, it's gonna look a lot more feminine. So that's how I manipulate this to get the level of feminine versus masculine that I'm looking for. Okay, so now I'm going to I'm going to uh, continue working on this. We've got uh, isn't the ear a little far back? Yes, I always do that. I always make the ear far back, you know? You start with a, a general layout. I always miss something, but you're right. Yes, I also agree with, uh, see that, and I agree with you. One ear. <laughs> you have a talent. Thank you very much. <laughs> I didn't miss too much. I just got here, says Sly. All right, thanks for being here, Sly. Glad you made it. So anybody too, we've, well, we're up to, I wonder if my viewer count isn't working. Is there still 57 or is that just the last update that I got? I don't know how many viewers are watching right now. Next time, do a male face for us. Oh, we can do a male face right now, watch. Let's do a male then switch it back to female. Super easy. Watch this. Oh, 84, yeah. My computer's not updating. All right, I'll just be less nervous if I just keep looking at that small number. Hey, it's just 57 of us. All right, I'm going to go back to the painting and show you how to do a male face real quick. So right now, we've got... Uh, it's, it's not exactly the most feminine that I can make it at the moment. You know, if I just kind of filed down the chin a little bit. Hey, look, if I bring that chin up, Smaller chin in comparison to the face. It's all about the size of the face compared to all the bones. Shallow eye sockets. This is how I make the feminine face. Like this. And let's put, yeah, I just want to, I just want to finish a little more. I'm going to show you the difference in a second here. But I want to show you, I want to I just do a real quick, completion of the parts here. Let's do a little brow right here. Real short brow right across the front like that. And let's do uh, what, so I forget who said it, but we've got the ear a little far back. So let's bring that forward. Let's put the hairline in place. Come up like this onto the temple a little bit. Let's go like this around the forehead. Maybe about right here like that we're gonna start putting putting some hair in there let me get a little bit more of my skin tone now and fade it up into this hair so again as I get darker up onto the edge of this hairline I want to use a little more red and then as I get lighter where it's coming down out from under that shadow I just make it a little more of the the uh, orange color. So I can just grab little dots of my colors, mix it in there. Less red as I move out of the shadow, more red as I move into it. Okay, so I just want to make it real clear so that we can see a distinct difference. Masculine versus feminine face. Now I'm going to change the ear. Let's put the ear, let's put the ear much closer. Okay, we're gonna move it up to here, like this. All right, let's put a little bit of highlight on that ear. Okay, put it down here like this, and get some red in the shadow. Let's put a little bit more highlight where it's kind of popping out here, kind of curls around to the lobe. Then we've got the little ridge there. Anatomy is kind of self-correcting, you know, just like, just like the ear looked too far back once I got the 
once I got the other parts of the head in place. That's the value of memorizing parts. One of the good things about memorizing parts is that as you continue to squeeze all of the parts in place, you'll find that if your placement is off, then it affects the whole, the whole picture. And so it, it helps you to get everything where it needs to go by just having knowledge of all the parts and then, and then uh, just going down the list, putting them all in place. Okay, we've got hair coming down in front of the ear now. Let's go like this. Get a little more of that dark color. Like this. How's that? Is that a better ear? Quite a bit further forward. Maybe it's too far forward now. Maybe we need to go somewhere kind of in between. I use a, I use a lot of basic, basic guides and, and proportions, things to get things in the right place. But it's always kind of a, it's kind of a 90 percent by using a guide, and then I just end up having to fine tune it by feel. You know, after you get things real close then it's easier to step back, look at it, and say, well, the ear looks a little far back. Let's adjust that. So the first step is putting an ear out there for everybody to look at so that you can get that brave person that says, that, lo <laughs> that looks crooked. <laughs> it's the most helpful thing ever, actually, having a lot of people letting you know what they see in your work is uh, hugely transforming to your work if you can handle it. Okay, let's go like this. Okay, I like that ear. I like that placement better. You're right, the ear was was a little bit, okay, a lot far back. Let's put some hair. Let's put some hair going like this, covering up that that old ear placement. For now, we'll just do a black shadow for the hair. I don't know what I want to do for the hair just yet, so we're just going to do that. Okay, now, let's zoom in a little bit because I want to make sure that everybody agrees that we have got a feminine looking face. Okay. I just want to make sure that there's no dispute that that's has feminine qualities. I'm not going to say it's a girl face. And I'll tell you why. Because, uh, because I was mistaken for a girl when I was younger plenty of times. I had long hair. I really loved my mullet. I liked my... <laughs> Are you a boy or a girl? Someone said to me once. And then for the first time I started thinking, oh man, I wonder if I should come in here. I don't really want to look like a girl. I just thought my hair was awesome. So, no, I, I say that jokingly, but, but really, as a creative person, you're doing all kind. You want power to make whatever kind of character you're imagining. We don't always want that clean line between, is this a boy, is this a girl? Sometimes we want to obscure how masculine or how feminine a face is. After all, a man can have a very feminine face. A woman can have a very masculine face. So how about we just find the elements that make those differences so that we have control over the character. Okay, so uh, I want to see if anybody disagrees. Does this look like a feminine face? It has, it has mostly feminine qualities, right? Gotta love a good mullet. <laughs> yeah. Yes, feminine. Thank you, Leanne. Thank you. Had a mullet. Oh, Tom. Tom had a mullet back in the day. There's no shame. <laughs> yeah. No shame, but definitely some laughs. <clears throat> Dude looked like a lady. <laughs> I did. I did. I should flash up some pictures. Actually, there's, there, I've got videos where I showed old pictures. You know. Man, it was a sight to see. My mullet is somewhere in between. I didn't even pay attention to like a good way to have a mullet. It didn't even fit into any category. It was just crazy hair. 
what do they say? Business up front, party in the back. Androgynous. <laughs> How much for an artwork? Oh man, a million dollars. I'm not ready to sell. Okay, so look, this is how we make it more masculine. I'm gonna show you now. Let's go over to the other camera again, and we're gonna look at we're gonna look at these features, and here's how I'll make it masculine. I'll just make the face smaller now in comparison to the head. But I don't. I I like the details on this face. That, that was hard to put those in. So rather than redoing the face, all I'm going to do is make everything else bigger. I'm going to make all of the bones bigger in comparison to that. So let's put some highlights. Let's make it a little more. A little more. Uh, per, per, protruding, popping, poppy outy right here. <laughs> It's going to pop out on the cheekbones a little more. I'm going to put a highlight right here under the eye. So I'm not just going to address the outline. I'm going to put a, a more of a, a cheekbone visible. We're going to put the forehead coming out more on the brow like this. Zoop. Like this. Let's take the, take the brow out. Get this color. Go out like this. Okay, so we're going to have a deeper eye socket because of that. And then we're going to make the brow show that. So let's get our black and purple and orange and make the, make the brow going further out now over the eye. And I'm going to bring it down closer to the eye because this is what happens with deeper eye sockets. The brows, well, you can see on my brows right now, I'm looking at the camera, look at that. It's like, a, it's like the awning of a building. Not very many young girls have a brow that hangs out over like that because these bones have grown for the last 40 years. So let's go like this. Let's put the light color right up here to bring that out and over. And now we have a deeper eye socket and so the face will gradually start becoming more masculine now we're going to bring the chin down and out so let's go like this bigger chin bone what is that called the mandible right do i got that right health class you know anatomy i always got the mandible confused with the clavicle <laughs> put the chin going down further out further it's just a bigger bone altogether but look at the tiny difference I didn't have to go far I just went a little bit down and so I can choose to what extreme I do this knowing that the further I go the more masculine this face will gradually become so now if I kind of chisel the chisel the, the face a little more, make highlights on these because all the ridges become, become bigger as the face bones increase. So if I put a diagonal line that's more distinct, like this, right here, let's put the chin right there. I need a little more of a highlight on the chin. Let's go like this. Okay. And then let's make the eye a little bit smaller in comparison because all of the features of the face are a little smaller in comparison to the face. So men don't have smaller eyes. They've got bigger face bones. So I'm just changing the comparison. I'm gonna shrink, I'm gonna shrink the parts down. So we're gonna take this eye Maybe put a little bit of a shadow under it like that. Shrink it down, put a little shadow over it. Shrink that down. There, see that smaller eye? There you go, bam. Now all I gotta do is put some shorter hair on it. Kinda looks like a, kinda looks like a, a rocker now, you know? 
much more masculine face because of that chin. And I think mostly the chin and brow. I would say the, the big difference makers is the brow and the chin right there. I like it. I like it. It's a pretty handsome young face. But it's much more masculine than it was. So you can see, you can see what I'm talking about. And so since this is something that uh, I, I think might generate some questions, I don't know, maybe. I'm just taking a quick look at the live chat. Chin bones connected to the, yeah, the old song, yeah. There you go. Transsexual fairy, <laughs> yeah. What, because he's got masculine features mixed with long hair? <laughs> yeah, it, it does kind of have that feel, doesn't it? But I think he just looks kind of like 80s rock band. Which kind of fits that description. <laughs> Nose bigger. Yes, yes, you can keep going. Nose is a face bone. It's a face bone. You could keep going with this and do things that go more and more masculine. But I just want to show these, these uh, big difference makers right away. The, the main difference is bigger face bone. So whenever we just take the whole face, shrink it in comparison to that head, it becomes more masculine. And whenever we expand the face and smooth out the features, it becomes more feminine. And it's below the brow. You know, what you're concerned with is below the brow. So we kind of expand it downward onto the chin rather than just on, onto the whole head because we want to maintain the head size. All right, all right. Thanks, Mary. Okay, let's move on. Let's not make this too bear, uh, boring. And we're going to go over here, switch cameras again. I got to put more more details on my fairy. So I want, I want a young feminine face on this fairy. As cool as it is to have that, you know, I definitely see some relatability, you know. It's like, hey, let's talk man to man, you and me, dragon. <laughs> the eye contact is good. But I'm gonna stick with the plan. We're gonna do a female looking face. I'm going to put some blue and white on here. He's saying, I understand you. Okay. So let's file down the, I sound like a, sound like a plastic surgeon. Let's file down the forehead right here. Let's take the chin back again. Shoop. And let's go over, cut off just the bottom of it, just barely. We don't need much because this is a, a very delicate balance of features that we have here. And then all I'm going to do is once again put the, make the eye a little bit bigger so that the the parts are a little larger in comparison. And so oh, I was looking for my paint. I've got it stuck to the wall. So I'm going to take my... I don't want that little bug in my paint. Let's put the <clears throat> white right here. And make the eye just a touch bigger. We'll put some black for eyelashes right above it. Make this line a little bit more vertical. Goes up like that. Down like that. Bigger eye. Let's bring the eyebrow up just a tiny bit. And then I'm going to put my shadow color. Actually here, let's put a little shadow under the eye too. Let's get more of a gray color. I like to use gray for the whites of the eyes, you know, but when you're working on such a tiny scale, it can be hard, hard to uh, mix, a color, mix a color. All right, we got the whites of the eyes a little bit more gray than it was. And now I'm going to put a little dot of black for the eye right on that right edge, right here. Just a little stripe to put the eye looking that direction. And then let's take the 
orange purple mix for the shadow and go a little bit higher on this brow and then lighten it as it goes over here to the cheekbone. We're going to put highlight right here. like so and then this is going to get a little bit darker as it goes up here so there's you know there's the set of shadows on the side of a face so you kind of have a a diagonal shadow going across the temple like this and if i just put these in here but just real subtle then i think it'll do a lot for the picture i'm going to put a little shadow under the eye right there going across the front for the cheek and then across here like that but it's just got to be lighter so let's grab some of this lighter color now and blend that with that dark line I just put on there I just want a slight line for the front of that cheek going up there here's some forehead right on here shadow going down by the temple. I'm just trying to blend these and get them to be as subtle as possible. Okay, we've got the cheek now right here going down the front of the face. Notice how close it is. A uh, super common point of struggle, super common struggle that I see on faces is putting these features too far away from the edge. So you want to get them right up against the edge. Right up right up on that line here's the nose I don't want to see like the nostril coming over further I don't want to see the mouth coming back everything is right on that that line very close okay then we're gonna put a a little bit more color on this on this lip right here like that and put a little bit of white to highlight it. Isn't it amazing, these tiny little dots of color, the difference that it makes. It's annoying to me, you know, because I have to do like a detail level that is ridiculous compared to the rest of the painting, but it's a face. You know, this is an exceptional piece of content when we're doing a face. So I'm going to take more of this light color and just adjust this edge of the nose a little bit. I want to bring this a little bit further in. I'm going to put a I'm going to put a little bit more shadow. I'm almost done with this face here. We're going to put a tiny bit more shadow on the mouth, just right here at the corner of the mouth. And then I'm going to put a little shadow right under that lip. I like that shadow, you know, a real important shadow to me is that shadow right under that bottom lip. <clears throat> and no, I think we can, I think we can leave the face alone for a while. I think that's pretty good. Well, let's get a little bit better blend right here. Let's get a little little softer. I changed that shadow in order to make a more masculine face. Let's Let's make it real soft again. Orange and white at the highlight. Let's start adding red as we go down along this diagonal line. And we'll just make it a more continuous, softer transition right here as we go down. And so now I can just add a little bit of white. Notice I left a little extra red in there because it's a cheek. Let's put some highlight right here down onto the upper part of that cheek and then gradually get darker as we go down. Man, do you know I've got some birds nesting right on the other side of this wall? I've got the sound of chirping. Do you hear that chirping? They're just right on the other side of this wall. I was trying to make a, a video without a, bun a bunch of background audio and there's the sound of birds chirping in the wall. But I don't have the heart to make them leave. They made their home there. Okay, I'm just putting the chin in place. I'm going to put a shadow under that chin. Let's get a little more of this shadow color. 
I've got a lot of black. That black is super powerful. Let me go up here. Let me go here and get more of my colors. I just want to make a dark, darker brown color for this shadow right here. I'm going to take the chin like this. There, look at the difference that makes. Okay, now, now I got to decide some things about the rest of this character. So I've got to put clothing on and I don't know what kind of clothing. So I'm going to come down here and start working on a leg while I think about clothing. Maybe if I can see more of the body in place, then that'll help me. So right here, I decided I don't want the legs going out. I mean, that the form of that leg is good and everything, but I decided I would like the look of a little more straight down, just something about the expression of the posture. I'm going to like better if it goes more downward. So I'm going to go like this. Downward on this leg. Like this. Let's put a shadow right here where the butt is. Let's put highlight right here where the thigh comes up onto that butt muscle. And then we're going to put highlight on the side. I don't want to go too light. Maybe, maybe this will be enough right here. We're going to go down like this across this thigh. And we got to go down to the knee. So let's just kind of blend this together and make that transition a little bit softer. Okay, and then let's go like this, knee. So again, you know, I look at this distance for the thigh, look, armpit, armpit to waist to hip, combination of those two segments, I divide it up like this, and then I use those two to get the length from the hip to the bottom of the knee. Now I'm going to go like this and put the leg coming down right here. I'm sorry. I zoomed in. I did all that off camera. <laughs> oh man, I'm sorry. Okay. Okay, we're going to uh, zoom out and do it again. My bad. Oh, isn't that a beautiful leg that you did not see me paint? Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> That wasn't fair, was it? Okay, we're gonna zoom in right here. And I'm gonna take this towel and I'm gonna show you what I was just doing. Okay. Oh, sorry guys. <clears throat> okay, at least we've got audio. <laughs> Last time we lost audio, this time I did it off camera. Okay, so I decided I like the angle of this leg, but I want to bring it more down. Let's go like this. Put the colors in place. And I'm just going to take this, you know, I've got the hip right here. So that kind of goes back like this. Hip goes back and then thigh attaches to it. We've got the front of the thigh curves down to the knee so let's take some of this darker color for the shadow and put it right here so we've got the butt transitioning right down to the back of the thigh and then we go right here and let's curve the front of the thigh get skinnier as we go down to the knee and so what i was pointing out was how i look at this length armpit to hip to get the length these two sections armpit to waist waist to hip, equal length sections. Then I use the combination of them to get down to the knee. Very easy for me to remember those proportions. So now I'm gonna put some highlights on here. Let's put orange and put a little bit of light and shadow to get a three-dimensional form here. And do a leg right here. It gets a little darker as it goes down. That'll make it look like it kind of pops out at the top at the hip. And so then we'll smooth this out a little 
like that. Get a smoother transition, smooth this out a little. Going up to that shadow. And I think it'd be cool to maybe have like a, you know, maybe like some kind of a, uh, you know how a lot of times you see like indigenous people with, with like a Hawaiian, Hawaiian dress kind of thing with strands coming down. I think that'd be a cool look for this. So let's go, let's go like this. Let's go orange, red, make a brown. Just make a brown color and go like this down on the edges. Something like this. And then, oh yeah, I like that outfit, that's cool. I'm starting to see it. So I'm gonna curve these over this shape right here. How the back slopes onto the top of the butt. I wanna make sure I get those curves in there. And then I'll put, put these shadows in place. We'll still see that shadow on the upper thigh right there under the butt muscle like that and then put the put the lower leg in place there was just something about that angled position that I don't know it just wasn't giving me the right vibe for the relationship with the with the dragon so the knees are are off the legs are offset it goes back like this before it goes down so now I'm going to put a highlight right here on the calf like this before I go down again like this the front of the shin has a curve to it so let's curve that and then put a little bit of this color on the side of the knee as that goes up and then maybe we have a little bit of shadow under this calf muscle. So I'll make that a little darker right here. And then let's try to make the colors the same. Here we've got more purple up there. Might have to do a couple layers. Okay, then we'll go like this, put another leg, I think another leg kind of, kind of going this way. Uh, I'm thinking about it. I like the leg on the other side, this one that bends a lot. I like that position. That's good. So I think I'm going to just make it less extreme. It's going to go out like this. Might have to try a different, couple different things. So notice how good all the color looks in the shadows. Wherever I have a darker shadow, it has all of this lifelike depth as long as I have color in it. So I got to be careful that I don't go too gray when I'm making shadows. I basically just add whatever amount of black I need to get it dark enough. I use color to get all the darkness. And then if I need it darker, I just add black at that point as a general rule. Then I adjust if it, if it actually needs to be a little more gray, then I'll adjust. Okay, we're going to go purple, orange. Just get some kind of a skin tone in here. We curve this, go down to the other knee. And this knee, I'm deciding if I want to, I think I'm going to bring it down lower like this. Down lower and then bend this leg like this. So maybe this entire thing will be a little bit lower. So let's just cut off the front of the person now. So I'm going to get my get my house paints that I did this background with and adjust my adjust my background again. So I've kind of got a gray brown in here and I just want to make these unwanted lines disappear. So I'm going to put black, maroon, and just take some white and obscure this this background and try to get it gray enough that it doesn't compete with the same color scheme that I've got on the leg. So I could draw this out, get it right where I want it, but the truth is that's hard for me to think through these colors 
and details, I always end up changing it if I pre-draw it because once I see all of these color relationships on there, I just want to change it anyway. You know, so I like to just go straight to the straight to the canvas with the color and think through it in the same way I would if I was drawing it. You know, I draw, erase, draw, erase, and I go through it in that way. So now I've got that leg there, I've got the body turning up like this. And the only thing is, I still feel like, I still feel, I wonder if I could pull it off if I put a little bit of a angle, like pulled all of this out a little bit more. That'd be kind of hard, but, but I would like the look of it because the straight up, straight up view is a little bit weird for me. Here, let's put a few plants in here, yellow, black. I just want to see this background remain background and kind of disappear. And we've got some green in there too. Let's put the green, green water down here. This is just to make this go away and stop bothering my, my view of the outline of my, my fairy, my giant fairy for that, for that matter. <laughs> Definitely not, not a typical size. But I think that's kind of fun. Let's put a little bit of shadow under the tail of the dragon back there. This is where we had the tail going way back. Like this. A little bit of shadow there, some white. I'm constantly adjusting the, the uh, layers, you know, constantly adjusting like this. So chopping off the foreground by using the background, then painting over the background again with more foreground. Okay, we've got our form there starting to show up, but I've got like orange arm and purple legs. We're gonna have to make a, <laughs> make a decision about the, about the color, but I can worry about that later. I wanna just have, I just wanna have a nice flow to the form here. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to put the front of the belly now. So let's get that defined. I'll use some I'll use some of my dark brown colors. So I've got all three of my colors, orange, purple, black to get that brown. And we've got the belly going down like this and then back where it hits the hip out onto the front of the leg like that. And then we can put maybe some little little strands coming down or something. Like that. And then I'm thinking that we can see if I had this kind of going back just a little bit, how would that affect how would that affect this shape? I don't know, maybe we'd have just a little more light on that leg. Maybe if I put just a little more highlight right on this leg, then I could adjust the perspective just slightly. So let's put a little brighter highlight right across the hip area coming down the side of the leg, like this. Actually, I'm going to make this whole leg brighter so that it comes forward more. Like that. There we go. Then maybe grab a little bit of shadow, put it on these edges again. Shadow right in here above that calf muscle. Then that muscle comes out here. We've got a shadow under it. It goes down like this. This goes down to the knee. I'm just thinking through the parts when I do this. Okay, let's get a little bit of a lighter, a lighter shadow right there so that it doesn't look as turned under. I'm trying to make this whole leg facing a little more up toward the sun. Like that. There we go. A little bit more. It is a little more. And then I think if I put some highlight on this here, let's do some light brown 
right in here, like that will highlight the hip as well. Going that way, and then we'll put, maybe we'll put like a tank top-ish kind of outfit. I think it'd be good. Maybe coming down around the back like that. Let's put the shadows on the armpit. So we're going to go purple, orange, right in here, like this. But we got to add lots of color. If you don't add color to the shadows on the armpit, it's going to look like hair. Not that there's anything wrong with that. For all of you ladies that are watching that have hairy armpits, it's fine. It's fine. I just am not choosing to put hairy armpits on my fairy. Okay, now I'm going to go like this. and put some highlights coming out there because I want this to be turned up facing toward the sun. So let's go like this, slope this line over on top of the shoulder and just blend this all together a little bit more. Right here, let's put a little more highlight right on here with the orange. The shoulder goes diagonally back down onto the shoulder blade so we'd have a line right about there. Maybe like that. Hmm. Let's work on that shadow just a little bit. The shape of my shadow got lost a little. There, I gotta blend that. I need more of a gradual, gradual turn on all my shadows. Right here, we might see a little bit of difference between the, might see a little bit of a shadow where the side of the breast is just barely visible right there, coming across the side of the armpit, and then see a little bit of highlight on the rib cage right here. So let's put that there. We go just a little bit, I think, is good. We don't want to make this. We don't want to make this unfamily friendly here. <laughs> so we'll just do a little bit of some form on the on the side there. And let's put the put the shadow back in here that I lost. A little more shadow in the armpit going down this way. And that's gotta get lighter as it goes as it goes down. This acrylic paint, you know, is uh it's slower drying, I think, than the house paints I use. So I'm finding it convenient to continue blending these shadows back and forth. Okay, there's some muscles that go diagonally back like this. Muscle definition is a very fun thing to draw, to paint. So I put some, put some time into learning it, you know. I'm going to put those diagonal shadows right there on the on that side and then just blend them. We've got a muscle right there, right here and right here. We've got the side. Okay. Now, I'm going to put uh you know, I need to hmm. I feel like I need to work the shape of that arm a little bit better now. So let's go back to background and start start adjusting this. To get these cliffs back here, I used, I think, red and black for shadows, but that's what I'm going to use to just do some adjusting now. Little tiny differences in curves goes a long way on human form. So don't est underestimate the power of a very tiny difference in a curve. So that's why I'm taking the time to go and just shave off little bits of this curve up here, I want to see the difference between the shoulder and the arm. I kind of lost it here, so I want to see that dip down, go across, and then go back up at the elbow. 
See, I want that difference between all those different little muscles in there. And I felt like I was starting to lose that. And I feel like the arm is maybe just a little bit, a little bit low maybe. So I'm going to try scooting it up just a hair. We're going to go like this. A little bit higher with that arm. Okay. Yeah, I like the look of that. Now, how am I going to make these wings attached to that body? How am I going to do that? Let me think through this outfit. Let's go. Let's put more of this brown on here. I'm going to put a shadow right in here like this we've got we've got the form that we still still probably want to see on this on this little outfit so this will look a lot more complete if I start putting these colors in here I'm gonna put the purple and orange together for a brown and then just make this line more straight so that it looks more like clothing going back like that. Now I've got a little shadow left under that, under that breast. And I'll leave it dark right there, but maybe a little bit lighter on the edge here. Let's go like this on this edge. And then we'll make that very quickly get darker as it comes down. <clears throat> into this brown color like this. So now we've got a little bit of light wrapping around from the other side. And I'm gonna put a little bit of a, little bit, man, I'm so tired of saying that word. I'm gonna put a reflective edge. Let's get some gray. I'm gonna try a little backlighting trick. Oh, my brush is, Brush is starting to split apart on me. Time to get a new one. I'm using a new brush because I lost that, that nice sharp edge. I gotta have that sharp edge to do these shapes. Okay, I'm gonna go like this. A light outline to look like the light coming across from the other side. Let's turn, go under, then let's go over the ribs. Go in at the belly, out again like this and down and across like that. Okay, now I just got to tone it down a little bit. I, my brush brought it way in onto the edge and I didn't want that. I didn't want that breast to come down that low. I'm not trying to make really big boobs. Okay, so I'm just gonna do a quick adjust on this background again because I want to fine tune this line. It's really important to me to have a good looking figure here on this. I want it to be worth worth the trouble, worth looking at, you know, so these tiny little adjustments on this particular part of the painting are really worth doing for me. So I'm going to go like this, bring that Bring that breast curve up just a little bit higher. Come down here like this. Then go across here under the arm. The only thing now, it's a little bit hard to see the outline, but hopefully that'll change. Let's put some brown back in place. I just want a little bit of that gray showing not a lot. So I'm going to bring this right up to the edge. Right there, just barely make that outline. There we go. Now let's put some brighter color down here where it's swooping out facing more upward at the hip. I'll make this gradually get darker as it goes up into here. Maybe make a couple wrinkles.
like that. Let's put a little more of that orange. There you go, see it kind of makes some wrinkles in there. Now, I'm gonna put a foot down here. Here's how we get a foot in place. I had to look at the camera, make sure that you can see me, see me working. I'm gonna do one more thing then, see, see what comments. I think we're running out of time. You know, the time just zips right by on me when I'm working on this detail stuff. I'm gonna put a foot right here. We've got heel. And we're gonna to go top of the foot, curving a little bit like this. And then we're gonna put the pads behind the toes in place. And then we'll put the pinky toe right there. Like that, there is the foot. So now I just gotta put highlights with the more orange color. So let's grab white and orange. Let's put an ankle right here. Going down to here and then blend that up to here. The ankle kind of comes across there. And then let's put the heel behind the ankle right here behind and under the ankle going across the arch of the foot like that. Achilles tendon right there. Little pinky toe, it's just a little dot. And then I'll just try to fade my edges, blend my edges so that it looks like it's, you know, if I just obscure the details a little bit, I don't have to make as much detail. So if I just kind of make this a little bit softer of a blend, then I think it'll be more immediately accepted because <laughs> I don't want to take a whole ton of time to try to make a, a perfect foot down here. But feet are, uh, man, they can be a tricky thing, can't they? It can be a real tricky thing to paint. Real similar to hands, but there are there are some relationships that you can remember. You know, for feet, actually, I don't know as much. I've just got a set of lines memorized. But for hands, I've got a lot more of that, of the uh, proportions memorized. If you ever, you know, take the time to sit down and look for size relationships in hands. Look for what is, you know, what part of the hand comes down. You know, you can look at a hand and say, oh, this knuckle comes down to this height, this comes down, thumb comes down to this knuckle. And just look for relationships. It's, it's the same on every hand. It's so universal. It really helps to very quickly uh, throw them together from imagination once you learn those relationships. Okay, let's go like this, put a little more highlight going up that ankle, forming the outside of this leg. Let's go like this. Get a little more light on the on the outside of this. got that giant muscle man that calf is really something to behold <laughs> big old thing <laughs> okay now I'm gonna put now I'm gonna put some wings so let's get creative for some wings I'm thinking since it's big that it needs some moth wings how about big moth wings? Not like the typical little little tiny clear fairy wings. Fairy feet, tiny foot, big cat. <laughs> yep. You got it. Yeah, a soccer player for sure. <clears throat> In general, the foot oh cool, I didn't know that. Foot is the length of the forearm. Mine is twelve mine is a, a foot long. My foot is a foot long. Wow, I wonder if that's why it's called a foot. 
So I'm looking at mine, seeing if you're right about that. Well, I know it'd be close. Fairy never skips leg day. <laughs> well, <laughs> could a fairy develop calves like that? I don't know. Maybe we're overthinking it a little. People just have different body types, right? But I do have to make a decision. I'm the creator of this fairy. I do got to make a decision. Do I want? Do I want it to be this size or that size? How do I want it? You know. In my opinion, the wings should either be grayish to fit the Viking look, or the same blue we used with the dragon neck, because she owns him, right? Okay, okay, all right. That's from Sama. I like the thoughtfulness on that. Gray, grayish to fit the Viking look, or the same blue. Well, grayish or blue. I don't know. Let's see if there's any other opinions out there. Some of us have larger calves. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I admire a real good large calf. I really like the curve of it. It's a good shape. Large wing. You're the boss. Hey, thanks, Arjun. You're always encouraging. Thank you. Thank you. You could even go colorful. Luna moth. Light mint green. Okay. Okay. I'm not sure. I'm not sure about it. I'm actually thinking, I, I like the look of light coming through it. So I, I think if I just capture light, then per, perhaps some contrast. Well, I, you know, since, uh, since there's no unified opinion on this, I'm thinking that what I'm going to do is just with some shade of brown, I'm just gonna create that same effect we've got on the dragon wing with the light coming through, then add colors. I'm gonna add colors to that. So let's make sure that we've got a good view of the wing on here. Let's go like this. Let's go up here. And I I'm gonna put some blue on it. We're gonna do that. We'll do some blue. So maybe blue right here, maybe there's a blue stripe. So there's a basic shape, you know, uh, the vein patterns to wings are pretty similar from, from wing to wing. If you look at butterflies, moths, but they also have diversity, the patterns that are on the veins. But here's what is universal about them. They swoop up, they go out and then downward, just like I've got them curved here. So when I real quick threw in those veins on the wings, that was just my experience of observing butterflies and moths. So when I make the shapes, you know, let's say we want to do a fun little stripe down the middle of this wing. What I can do is make that stripe be affected by these veins. And if I do that, I'm going to have something of a more natural wing look. It's going to look a lot more like a believable wing. So I'm just copying patterns that, that we've already seen a lot of in nature. So I've got blue, black. I'm going to fade to, let's see what it looks like if I make the lower part of the wing a duller, more neutral color like brown. Let's go down here. I kind of like that maroon too, like this. But I'm going to put some light popping through it so it kind of has that magic, you know. Let's put this color up here. Let's make it going over here to these edges. And then let's just fade that, that color right into the blue. Maybe like this. Again, I'm going with that shape. I'm going with that swooping shape that I created. Let's put some yellow right here. Remember that effect that you can do of the light shining through something. If it gets more toward yellow as it gets brighter, then that's very good for creating the effect of light coming through that object. So I'm going to put more and more yellow right in here. 
make it look like a more transparent part of the wing. Like this, all the way down to here. Make some light coming through there. And then let's go up here and down again. Maybe we've got some little, maybe we've got some little designs on the edge. I'm not sure. But someone pointed out, I need to have this wing be higher, especially if I want to tip her this way. Then I need to make sure that I put here. Let's just do like a, do, do kind of a grayish color. You can totally overdo colors. You know, you get excited about, oh, I'm going to put all kinds of different colors on this, put all these accents, and then nothing looks like an accent anymore because you've got every color in the world on your thing. So I've got my blue-brown contrast, so I'm just going to leave it alone now and stick with the grayer, grayer color. So maybe gray will be good up in here. And then I'm going to use white. I'm going to use some white. Well, let's think about this. Let's think about it. We want it kind of tipping this way. We've got we've got that wing right there. Here, let's put Yeah, let's put a little bit of white. Right here, let's put like a little little circle-y thing. I think that'll be fun if we put little little eye patterns on the wings, something like that. Okay, and then I think we need some overlap. It can't just be one wing. We've got two wings here. So let's put the top edge of this one coming across like that. And then we're gonna need, we're gonna need to Put some shadow so I'm gonna put a little more shadow right in here so let's move it away from yellow now where I've got the overlap so I'm gonna go more black and more of that maroon color to make the overlap of that blue wing going up and behind this wing so now we've got some overlap happening and then I'll brighten that let's brighten that blue Let's go like this. Blue in here, add some white. Blue already gets a little, little greener as you brighten it. But if I want to enhance that effect, I can grab a little bit of this phthalo green. Let's get just a touch of it. There, and then as the light shines through that, if we want to make a more transparent part of the wing, just make it a little bit greener right there. Let's make that go right up in here. I'm gonna bring the top edge of that wing down a little bit. I feel like I went too high with it. There we go. And let's bring the influence of those colors down here into that, into this. We've kind of got blue coming through right there. So I'm gonna put, if this bright blue is getting the light, casting a shadow. Maybe I should put a little bit, a little bit lighter bluer color to create that look of an overlap right there. There we go, more transparency to the wing that way. And now I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put the white. I want it to be straighter still, maybe like, Maybe more like that angle, going over like so. And let's put the, where are we gonna put that top wing? Here, let's put a lower one in place. Let's do this, let's put another wing down here. So we're gonna have to get rid of this one up in here, unless we just keep these real long. Let's just say the top one is real long. How about we do this? Bring that one way over here like that. We're just roughing out some ideas on color scheme. Just roughing out the ideas. Okay, now let's put this wing behind and down lower. And 
you know, the top of a wing could have a little different pattern than the underside of a wing. Let's go like this, put the, put the lower wing on top of that one. Maybe there's, you know, I don't know if you, you spend much time looking at butterflies, moths, you know, but a lot of the time you can have a real, a real plain looking wing on one side, but then when it turns over, the other side is amazing. So we can just do maybe a little more of a plain look on this side. Let's put some of the little bit of that brown in, I think it'd be good. I gotta get enough color in there, it looks like the same set of wings. So let's go over here. And to make it look like, you know, if this one is tipping down more, I want light kind of coming this way. I think if this is grayer, it's gonna help to look like light bouncing more off the top of this far away, of this, of this, this one that's going behind rather than coming through it. And then this one, we've got the light coming through. Man, man, we're really making this complicated, aren't we? Let's try to open up those wings a little bit. And maybe I'll put, hmm, let me think about this. It needs shadow. It needs shadow right in here. I'm just doing this to separate them. They've got tails too. I like tails on wings. It's a cool look. Let's put some more yellow. I like that bright yellow on this edge, so I'm going to enhance this edge just a little bit. Really try to get the light popping through that section. Right in here. Let's put yellow and maroon. I'll bring it up onto this just a little bit. So we can kind of see. Then what should I put up in here? I'm still having kind of a hard time. I think the pers okay, this is what's weird. The perspective is kind of wonky because the because I need them to be closer together here, further apart here, right? Maybe somebody has already seen that and said it. But I'm seeing that I need to have this go further back like this. There we go. Let's go down like that. And then this one needs to be more. Yes, the angles. The angles were a little bit off. So now I'll put a little bit of gray in there as well. Let's put some gray just coming out this way. Maybe like so. And sometimes simpler is better, but I'm liking that. It's getting better as it goes. It's definitely getting more interesting. This is kind of fun, this black hook. I didn't intend to have that, but it's kind of a fun addition to the wing. Like that, I like the way that looks, so maybe I'll just keep it. Okay, this fairy is the Western hookwing swallowtail variety. Okay, let's go like this. Put a little border on the wings. Oh, I like that blend to black. Man, that really did something for it. I don't always... I don't always have an explanation for, for things. All I know is that I really like the way that gray came across there. So definitely gonna leave that. Oh yeah, and this needs to be over, not under. Whoops, I went backwards there. So this needs to be like so, overlapping the underwing. 
like that. And then let's put some black right in here. create the rest of that overlap and then maybe fade you know pure black might be a little bit extreme let's fade some color into there there we go a little bit of color coming out from under here and maybe a little bit of white I don't want to do the yellow because that's the effect I'm saving for this, this front wing. Okay, so a little bit of white to lighten the end of it. Hopefully it creates a shadow where it's kind of up and under this wing here. Wow, fancy wings. I'm a butterfly lover, you know. When I was younger, all I did was just roamed the fields, looked at butterflies, identified the names, you know, the given, the given names that they have. I had like an Autobahn Society book, and I would just go, go out in the field with that book, memorize all the butterflies. Yeah, I just want to bring that wing back, bring it over there. But maybe this wing is a bit high on the shoulders. Maybe it's just a bit high right there. I got to leave room for the other muscles. So maybe I'll scrunch it down just a bit. And what about the hair? Man, decisions, decisions. There's so much to do. When you get into this detail stuff, and it's time to stop. That is sad. I don't want to stop. So, what am I going to do? I like looking at it in the camera. It's nice looking at your picture. Looking at your picture on the screen, seeing it small. It's a fun thing. So, what I'm going to do is adjust my outline a little bit. I don't care about these hills anymore. There's not enough of them showing for me to care. I'm just gonna use this light blue again to try to get a, a good visual on where I want these shapes to be. So I wanna shrink the wing down so it can attach a little bit lower because it looks like it's almost going around to the chest. You know, I want it to look like it attaches to the back. So we're gonna scrunch it. Scrunch it right there, and then we'll have a little bit more perspective as well. It'll come a little more toward me, like this. And then I'll have my then I'll have my separation that I'm looking for. And then I'm going to put hair coming down. And hair. How am I going to do this hair? What color? All right. Let's go like this, put it kind of swooping down. I do like the black. We're going to go. I think it'd be cool to see the hair just kind of swooping down in here. That's a little bit extreme. <laughs> Big old black stripe. Let's go like this. I'm just trying to make skinny little lines, so I'm adding water to the paint. Here, let's use this. Let's get something a little bit more fluid. I'm adding lots of water. And so now when I go in here, it's going to do more skinnier little lines. These acrylics are better for the real tiny details. The uh, tubes, I mean.
There we go. Let's put a little bit of hair coming across here too. This will be fun. You really got to watch the distance from the canvas when you're doing this, you know. Get lots of lots of moisture on the brush and be very very accurate with the distance. Better too far than too close because it'll make you'll see if I mess up, you know. You'll see a big fat black line once I get too close. There we go, we've got little strands of hair coming down. But what color should it be? Okay, I think that it'd be good if it matched the wings. It'll be too much color. It'll be too much color if I do anything besides the colors that are already on the wings. So, let's do uh let's do the same colors let's do the same same color scheme in here blue like this who doesn't like blue hair if only hair dye could maintain that color i've tried a few times let's put the blue in there and it's on top of black right now so i'm kind of losing a lot of the color so i might want to wait for this to to dry a little bit before I really get a lot of nice vivid color. But it'll be neat to see some blue. I think that'll be a fun effect to have in there. Some blue hair and maybe a little bit of yellow. I have no idea what that noise is. Let's put some Yeah, blue's cool. I'm just wondering if I should do something else in there. I'm unsure on that one. Don't want to lose my shadows. Let's do some black shadows. I really like the dark look. I like that. And so now I'm almost there. I'm almost there with this fairy. But I'm going to have to stop for today. I'm very close. I'm going to put some black shadow under these wings to create the shape of the back like this. We'll see the body of the fairy better if I just put this last little shadow like this and then across the top of the butt as it slopes. Like that. And then if I put just a little bit of white in there I can get some good looking edge lighting and then blend a little bit of brown so let's go back up to our brown colors and make that dark shadow not a sharp line but a smooth gradient that goes onto the body kind of gives a more three-dimensional three-dimensional body this way then I'll take all these colors and kind of blend them together right here on this line like that there just a little bit a few lines just to show the curve you know the a nice body shape of the female form all right well i like the progress i made today have a little bit of have a little bit of reflection on this hair i think that'd be cool too let's do this before i leave before i stop i think it's good to put a little bit of a little bit of white highlights on this hair. So if it's growing this way, I might have little little streaks of highlights going here. I might have a little bit in here, a little bit right there. Ooh, that's very smurfy. Mm. Well, it seemed like a great idea. It seemed like a great idea. I'm not so sure now, looking at it, that I want quite that much blue. 
We'll see. I think I've got to let it dry so that I can actually get some get some good colors in there. But I don't want to let it dry. I just want to get what I want right now. Oh, that looks pretty cool. I like those highlights in there. But I'll be able to do better if I get rid of that big, if I let that big uh, thick layer of black that's in there dry so that I can put stuff on top of it. And it's time for me to go anyway. So let's flip over, flip over to the other screen here. Let's go like this. And I'm going to start reading the last bits of live chat go green black <laughs> some murphy <laughs> back to black back to black <laughs> yeah it's fun to color hair you know but there it is hard to beat natural you know black brown blonde what natural colors it's really hard to beat that it really does look good on a person what's her name oh man i am not gonna do that I'm not going to name a fairy. I can't have my friends seeing me in public giving names to fairies petting dragons. <laughs> but it is fun. It is a very fun thing to paint. Hey, you're welcome, Sly. Goodbye. Stay safe. Have a blessed day. Back to you. Back to you. If I'm ever stupid enough to get a tattoo, I will have to commission Joe to design it for me. No, I'm sorry. I'd love to do that, but I can't be the guy that has unchangeable work on your skin. But thank you for the compliment. I would. I would do it. I'm sorry. I would. I just now changed my mind. Gold accessories on the braid as well. Oh, yeah, that'd be cool. I, I think accessories... Would be cool. Please see video on my channel. All right, Mr. Dotto. <laughs> I'll take a look at that. You'll have new friends then, Joe. Yeah. All right. Okay. You tell me what to name the fairy. This is so much fun to watch. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Nice one, when when you will continue. Well, this painting is not finished. I really want it to be finished, but I'm gonna have to continue on Monday. So the live stream days are Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday. And so I'm gonna continue on this painting on Monday because I I just can't I just can't call it done yet. I've gotta put I've gotta put some details in there. I've got to be happy with the way that fairy looks. I wanted to add a little bit of a magical effect, you know, like maybe a little bit of electricity coming out. You know what I was thinking on it? You know, it's got like the lava fire in its eyes. I was thinking it'd be kind of cool if like where the fairy's putting the hand on it, it's like turning blue or something. Like, <laughs> like that's some kind of a, no, I'm not going to go any further with that. Already looking forward to your next video. All right, thank you very much. Never stop learning from you. All right, that's very good to hear. Okay, time for me to wrap it up. Our time is, let's see how we did on time. 10.53. Going on two hours again, man. These go so long, but painting human form is not, I mean, that, that is, uh, in my opinion, at the the top of the difficulty chart on painting you know thinking of all the subtle curves in the form trying to get the light and the shadow to be the right balance while getting the shape to be the right balance it's it's a level up from rocks and trees you know so so two hours i feel like i would be misleading everyone if if i said that it should happen faster than that you know if you can paint Paint people faster than that, the more power to you. You're better than I am. But actually, I feel like that one went very smooth. I've had much more difficult time painting just the right position and form. I've been doing so much studying with drawing lately. It's really helped. I feel like if you want to get better at painting something, learning to draw it is 
is really uh, step one. Cheers from David Bell. Thank you very much. All right. Thanks for all the encouragement, guys. I'm going to wrap it up. And uh, again, it's 9 a.m. on Monday, 9 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. And then again on Tuesday, the following day, same time. It's always 9 a.m. until further notice. And so I'll, I'll see you on Monday. <laughs>